Lightning Rod at Dollywood has been one of the most problematic roller coasters on the planet. To say that this ride has been a mess its entire existence is an understatement. This ride has caused so many problems for Dollywood that they have been forced to take action and strip the ride of its signature feature, its launch lift hill. This is Lightning Rod, a roller coaster failure. Lightning Rod has endured many problems throughout its lifetime, the most prominent of which is the infamous Launch Lift Hill. This lift hill has plagued this coaster with many issues that have prevented the coaster from operating consistently. This is a problem, especially for a coaster of Lightning Rod's popularity. It's basically the equivalent of Millennium Force at Cedar Point being down 20% of the time almost every single day. Yeah, imagine how annoying that would be. You wait over an hour and the coaster goes down, it doesn't reopen the rest of the day. If I were in that situation, I would be disappointed and honestly a little annoyed too. This is how the visitors of Dollywood have often felt when Lightning Rod has not been able to operate through a day consistently. In fact, I have experienced this scenario firsthand while visiting Dollywood and attempting to ride Lightning Rod. Back in 2022, we visited Dollywood for two days and were only able to ride Lightning Rod once. We tried a total of three separate times and were not able to ride Lightning Rod a single time. Now, you may be wondering, why do we only try four times to ride such an amazing coaster? Well, let me explain. The ride was closed for the majority of the first day, and we were lucky to be able to ride it later that day when it finally opened up. The second day, we were there, and it shockingly opened on time, but went down for an extended period of time that morning. We checked back later, and it was open, but halfway through the queue, the ride rolled back on the lift hill, and we had to get out of line. What I'm trying to demonstrate is the extensive reliability issues that Lightning Rod experiences on a daily basis, at least used to. Dollywood recently announced that they will be replacing the problematic launch with a high-speed chain lift. Dollywood hopes that this will help increase the reliability of the coaster, but I'm not certain that it will completely solve the problem, but I'm going to save that for a future video. How about this? If this video gets 50 likes, then I'll do a separate video detailing whether or not the high-speed chain lift will help increase Lightning Rod's reliability. Now, what has often been credited for the unreliability of this coaster is the LSM launch system found on Lightning Rod. For context, LSMs are the white fins you see on some roller coasters, such as Maverick at Cedar Point or Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. Lightning Rod's launch was manufactured by Velocity Magnetics. Velocity Magnetics is mostly known for their magnetic braking systems, but also produces roller coaster launches as well. Now, Velocity Magnetics has a pretty good track record overall, and I'm surprised that the launch was a big issue. Now, I believe that the launch played a key factor in the unreliability of Lightning Rod, but I think it's also RMC's programming's fault too. RMC does most of their work in-house, meaning they don't contract other companies to do parts of the roller coaster building process for them. For example, RMC does their own trains, track, and now, after the lightning rod fiasco, they make their own braking systems. Which leads me to believe that RMC was not pleased with the product provided by Velocity Magnetics. I believe that Velocity Magnetics either delivered a faulty launch system that was riddled with problems, or they delivered a launch that was not very compatible with RMC programming, trains, etc. I believe the second of these two scenarios is the most likely, because it is extraordinarily rare for a company to provide a faulty product and not replace it, so it's most likely not well optimized for RMC coasters. Now, as I stated earlier, I don't think the LSM launch is entirely to blame. I believe some of the issues are RMC's programming. Now, I'm no expert in roller coaster engineering and all of that stuff, but I do know that a roller coaster is controlled from a central computer called a PLC, or a Programmable Logic Controller. This computer is responsible for controlling everything about the coaster, including taking all the info every sensor relays to it. Since LSM launches require a large amount of power to propel a train, that is a huge load on the PLC. And since RMC does not normally make coasters with launches, the RMC programmable logic controller might not be well equipped to handle the launch system of Lightning Rod. Now, as you are probably aware, Dollywood has replaced a lot of topper track used on Lightning Rod for the steel iBox track. Dollywood hoped that this would get rid of some of the issues the coaster had. Now, do I think it helped? Yeah, probably, but I doubt it really had any major impact on the uptime of the coaster. I heard in 2023, Lightning Rod was operating a little more consistently than normal, and I don't think it's from the iBox track. In fact, I believe that Dollywood must have figured out a way to help the coaster operate a little more consistently. 
or it may just be that it's had a good year. And I thought the Eibach stack really had a significant impact on the uptime of this coaster. It's no secret that Lightning Rod has had a rough existence, with a lot of downtime, issues, and a little bit of negative publicity due to the unreliability of this coaster. Now, I did get the chance, as I mentioned earlier, to ride Lightning Rod back in 2022 with the launch. And it was an incredible ride. Now, this coaster is really good. I mean, it's an RMC, so, I mean, pretty much all RMCs are amazing. But this one, it was really good. And it was also my first RMC coaster, which makes it even more special. It's a ride I will truly never forget, and it is partially the reason that I became a roller coaster enthusiast. When I rode this, it was such a wild ride experience that I just, it was crazy. I couldn't, like, process it at all. The launch got the ride off to a great start, and it was just relentless from start to finish. I mean, the first drop was good, the launch was good. Like, it was a very well-rounded coaster that I enjoyed a whole lot. And it was even my number one for a few months. I mean, like, I can't really even put the experience into words. I mean, this was an amazing first RMC, and it was easily the most intense and aggressive coaster I had ridden at the time. And I was literally shocked by the way this thing was trying to throw you out of your seat. It was just an amazing experience. And from that day on, RMC became my favorite manufacturer. And that hasn't changed. Okay, moving on. So, we know the lighting rod is a mess. Now, let's go to the reasons why this coaster was a huge failure for Dollywood. For starters, Dollywood paid a huge amount of money for Lightning Rod up front. This coaster cost a whopping 22 million USD. And that is just the original cost of the ride. That doesn't even include the additional expense of converting Topper Track to iBox Track. I believe that Dollywood has put in at least 30 million USD to try to fix this coaster unsuccessfully. And now they have to put in even more money to put in the chain lift because this coaster was so unreliable. Another reason why this coaster was such a failure for Dollywood is that this coaster frustrated a lot of its guests. When visiting a theme park, you want to have the best day possible, and when you have a coaster as unreliable as Lightning Rod, it can make people mad. Think of how much money those people paid for their tickets. They expect a really good experience. But when your star traction is not operated consistently, people are disappointed because they probably had to pay a lot of money to get in. And they want this experience to feel like they got their money's worth. And it's, let's say you didn't get on Lightning Rod because it was down for the day. You might not feel like it was good value and you might not come back. So imagine you don't really visit amusement parks often. And you don't understand why the ride just suddenly stopped working and it's taking forever to get fixed. This could lead to a lot of people not being happy with Dollywood. And then they don't recommend the park to their family and friends because... Their rides, they just break down and they don't work correctly. Even if it's not Dollywood's fault, they might still blame the park and be like, why aren't your rides operating consistently? And this just, yeah, it's not good for the park's publicity and image. There's another problem with Lightning Rod, and this time it's not for Dollywood. It's for RMC. This coaster severely hurt RMC's reputation for making reliable rides. And this issue could turn some parks off from not wanting to build an RMC because they want a reliable attraction and if they look at the track record of RMC, there's a chance they don't get one. And to be quite honest, their rides still aren't super reliable to this day. Wildcat's Revenge at Hershey Park had to close for a few weeks in July so RMC could fix a problem that the coaster was having with its structure. In fact, that very problem is the reason why I was unable to ride Wildcat's Revenge when I visited Hershey Park. Now, I was a little disappointed that Wildcat's Revenge wasn't open, but I knew I would get back to Hershey Park within the next couple of years and I'll be able to ride it then. But think of the people who had that one day to visit the park and the headline attraction was not open, and why they never were able to make it back to Hershey Park. I mean, an unreliable ride can leave a bad taste in your mouth, especially when you're visiting an amusement park. And this is the effect that Lightning Rod has had on a lot of guests who have visited Dollywood. And it's just not good for publicity along with the park's overall image. So, silly question, but was Lightning Rod a mistake for Dollywood? And the answer is yes. It is definitely a big mistake that Dollywood made. The ride experience was unique and amazing, but there were just some design flaws that prohibited the coaster from operating on a consistent basis. Overall, Lightning Rod will go down in history as one of the most troubled roller coasters of all time. And this is definitely a roller coaster failure. 
This video took a lot of time and effort to make, and I would really appreciate if you would give the video a like. And if you want to see more content like this, then a sub to the channel would be fantastic. Because you don't want to miss out on any more roller coaster failures. As there are a couple coasters I want to cover in the near future. And these could be really interesting. And you don't want to miss out. And if you want to know why Cedar Point will never break a record again, then click the video on your screen right now. So, thanks for watching. And this has been Lightning Rod, a roller coaster failure.